Start sitting. Start sitting comfortably. Whatever that is for you. And uh, so we can just um, ground in, center ourselves and into the present moment here. We can let our eyes be closed or soft. Just elongating our breath and slowing it down. Here she comes. And going inside. So letting our breath be a little bit slower, a little bit deeper. Noticing if there are any tense places inside in our body that we might want to breathe into. And you need to let any sound out with your exhale, of course, just let it happen. <sighs> any sighs or ahs, whatever you like to. Help yourself let go. Letting the belly relax, letting the shoulders, the jaw, tongue, letting go of our brow. And then bringing one hand to the low belly, just a gentle tapping under the navel here. We want to stimulate our our Dantian center as we breathe into it. And then bringing our fingers up to our heart area, maybe a gentle tapping around the heart and thymus to kind of wake up that area a little bit as we breathe into it and come inside. And bringing our hands up to our scalp and doing a little massage. Gently massaging the scalp all around. Letting our fingers come to our ears and doing a little rubbing and pulling on our ears. Bring that vagus nerve on board. And then just bringing our fingers inside our ears, gently pulling down, and taking a breath here, holding. And then our arms can come out from our shoulders and we'll reach our arms forward, pulling our heart back toward our spine. And then bringing our arms back as we lift our heart. So flapping our wings here a few times to let the spine move. Waking up our spine. We'll stretch for our back, we'll stretch for our chest, and then letting your arms come down beside you and relax. The first pose we're gonna do is deer today. So if you want to have a pillow under your shoulders, you might just have one available. And let's bring our left leg back next to our hip with our right foot out in front, leg bent to start with. And just kind of feeling our left hip kind of sink into the mat. Notice if the sits bones are all the way down onto the mat. And also notice if we can move our foot a little bit out from our hip and still feel our sits bones on the mat on the ground. 
just kind of finding how much internal rotation of that hip there. And then we'll bring our right hand back and we'll start to spiral back to the right. And the three levels are, I like to do are to stay up on the arms and take a few breaths, move down onto the elbows and eventually lay down on the hands. But feel free to stay in any of those levels or variations for as long as you want or do whichever ones you like. Have to go all the way down if you don't want to or you can go all the way down and not go through the first two levels. Just breathing into this little twist here. Come down. As always, we start out where our body leads us to the point where there's just a little bit of, you really start to feel it, but you're not pulling or not efforting ourselves into the pose. We're just allowing our breath with fear. There's a, a lot of twisting going on. So we let our breath kind of guide us into the twist. And it also provides a nice stretch for our side body, our side and the shoulders. Stretch across the front of the chest if you're all the way down on your hands. Pillow underneath if you need that for the shoulders, we can always bolster underneath the chest. As we spend time in deer, we might find that we can increase that twist a little bit more if we want to sort of migrate more to the right.
ask you to be lying down on your hands all the way down. You might want to start making your way back. Or you can stay there a little longer. We'll be here a little bit longer. If you like, you can backtrack a little bit here and stay up on the elbows for a while and then onto the hands for a while. Adding a little variation to that pose by changing our position. And we'll come make our way back around to where we started. And and just feeling that internal rotation in our left hip. And taking a breath here. And we'll bring our left leg forward and just kind of windshield wiper, the legs and the hips kind of moving around. And we'll bring it to the other side. So <clears throat> if you have an ulster you want to bring to the left, you can do that. And Holding our right leg under with our left leg out in front and bent. Just kind of feeling that right hip. Noticing if our sits bones are all the way down. Maybe scooting that foot out a little bit more. Finding how much that foot can move away from the hip and still feel our sits bones down. And then we'll start to spiral over to the left. I'm gonna adjust my body. <laughs> and again, you can stay up on the hands for as long as you want, come down to the elbows, come all the way down. Any of those levels that either um, transit through them or just stay in one. Allowing our breath to deepen that twist.
might start to make our way back to if we're lying down on our hands. Start to come back up the way we came. making our way around to where we started with our hips on the ground. Just taking a breath here. And we'll bring our right leg out in front and again, maybe windshield wiper the legs and hips to kind of Bring them back into balance, twisting them. And then we'll extend our legs out in front for caterpillar. So lifting the sits bones and letting our body relax forward over the legs. Comfortable to round the spine, comfortable to allow the head to hang. We get that stretch in our spine and decompress our vertebra. Both the twisting of twisting that we do in the deer pose and the forward folding that we do in caterpillar are both ways that will naturally relax our body. Help everything to slow down and calibrate. The best course stretch for the bladder meridian that runs up the back of our legs, up our through the back of our hips, through alongside our spine, all the way up through the back of our head, and ending just under the forehead, around the eye area. That all important meridian that regulates the fluid system of our body and also absorbs and takes in all of the unprocessed emotions. Give that channel a nice stretch.
And then we'll slowly come up from there, just kind of walk the hands, the legs to come up. Give the legs a little shake. And then we'll just open up into a straddle dragonfly, however wide your legs want to go. And let our arms Relax forward in front of us. Maybe have a pillow under your arms if you like. Support. Open the hips a little bit more. The sound of rain, or the constant sound of the rain falling is sort of like a meditation in itself. I really enjoy this magical quality to water that, that element. bodies are mostly made up of water. We feel that resonance, I think. It feels like home. We're also in between eclipses right now. We're in this, um, in between the solar eclipse that just happened last Thursday and this full moon lunar eclipse that's happening on May 5th. <laughs> so it's sort of a um, between the worlds kind of place that we're in. And eclipses are times of great change, be great new beginnings, great revelations can happen in this eclipse cycle, awareness of a new, a new path that might want to open up or just some kind of change that might be wanting to happen in our lives. Get aha experiences. Okay, so let's um, slowly come up from here. And as we come all the way up, we'll just lean back a little bit, slide the legs together, <laughs> give them a little shake. And if you want to bring your feet in close to the hips, hands behind the hips, and just do a little up and down, we can. Some just helps kind of move the blood in the legs, I think. And we're going to be coming onto our belly into Sphinx. And this is where you might want to have a strap handy. I'm going to do a little bit of a sequence. And Think that's a little different. So, coming onto the elbows to start with, just maybe let, letting our pelvis rock side to side and used to this back bend.
And then we're going to bend our left leg and reach around with our left hand or put a strap around your leg if you need to. Just if that right arm needs to walk a little bit forward away from you, it can, or wherever it wants to be as we roll our left shoulder back and just sort of press our pelvis into the ground a little bit to give our thigh hip flexors a little stretch. You can always lift your left leg as well, or your left foot, if you want to, or leave that leg on the ground. Either way. And then we're going to release that left leg and bring our left elbow underneath our shoulders again. We'll see if we can slide our left knee up toward the left shoulder, however far it can go up in Sphinx. So if you're not able to stay up on the elbows very long, you might come in and out of it might bring your elbows farther away and kind of just modify your sphinx or just keep your leg a little bit, your knee a little bit lower, just kind of exploring that position. That intense hip opener. <laughs> so if, you're, if we're up and on our elbows, obviously that's putting a lot more pressure on the hip. So just kind of find what works for you here. Somewhat of an active hip opener. And then if it's possible to be in this position up on the elbows, we're gonna take our right arm and we're gonna thread it through and underneath our left arm and lie down on it and look to the left, resting our head on our left hand. So we'll feel that stretch, a little bit of a stretch in our right shoulder and upper back. And then as we lay down, we might find that our left knee wants to come a little higher up towards our shoulder.
Okay, and then we'll bring that right arm back through. Come up and let our left leg slide down. And <clears throat> back into Sphinx. If you want to use a strap for your right leg, like I need to. <laughs> Otherwise, just bend your knee, grab hold of your ankle or calf, whatever. And you can have that situated here. Roll the shoulder back and sort of gently pressing the pelvis into the ground. And I struggle with my strap. <laughs> Right, just a little increasing of that stretch in our thigh and hip flexors. Nice thing about having a strap is then you're able to keep both arms on the ground for support. A little bit more relaxing. <laughs> Of course, you could also bring your left leg up if you want to increase the compression, sort of balances the sides and increases the lumbar compression and the stretch in the front. Oops. And of course, any time that you, your arm gets too tired or you feel like you don't want to stay in that <clears throat> quad stretch anymore, you can always release out of it at any point and just come back into Sphinx. This is a little bit too much. Always want to listen to our body. And then we'll go ahead and we'll release that leg down and see if we can slide our right knee up toward our right shoulder a little ways in the sphinx pose. Then you can bring your elbows out farther away from you, or just not lift the knee very high or bring it up very high. Finding where that place is. You feel the opening in that hip, but it's not painful. <laughs> Feel that resistance. You might notice that one side is different than the other. One side might be easier to come into half frog on this side on, than it was on the other, or vice versa.
And then if we can be up on our, make our way up on our elbows, we might take that left arm and thread it under our right arm and just turn and look to the right, resting our head on our left arm, not our right arm, sorry. <laughs> it's a little bit of a twisty thing here. And just relax, feeling that stretch in our back and shoulder. We'll slide that left arm back through and slide our right leg back down the mat. And we'll stay in Sphinx a little bit longer or come into seal if you prefer to end in seal. You can straighten the arms and kind of widen them out a little bit. Sphinx and seal for another minute or so, and we can also put a bolster under our pelvis for support and seal. Well, if we are in seal, we can bend our elbows to come back down onto the mat. And we'll make our way up to our knees, our hands and knees, all fours, and just oh, gently start to move the spine a little bit by curling the tailbone under, very slowly rounding our back. And then letting it come into an arch. Think slowly and gently. And maybe doing a little circling of our hips, of just letting our Fine, move around however it wants to. Our head and our shoulders and our hips, everything, but letting the spine kind of move. It feels good. And then the other direction.
and we'll sit back into child's pose. So bring our hips to our heels. Have the knees together or the knees apart. Feet together or feet apart. Okay, so we'll make our way up from there and we're gonna be coming around to our back. And you may want a strap for this. Start by hugging our knees into our chest. Your body relax. Just take some a little moment to orient to a different <laughs> position. <laughs> and then we'll put our left foot on the ground and curl up towards our right knee. Bring our hand to that foot to come into um, half happy baby or supine dragon, you might put a strap around your foot where you might like to use a strap instead. And then we'll slide our left leg down the mat so we can kind of gently pull that right knee down toward our armpit, toward the ground. We stretch our left leg out. You might use both hands on your foot as well. Any of those options to the sole of our foot facing the ceiling. And then we'll 
guide our right leg across our body. So if you need bolstering pillows or something to the left of you, we're gonna take that leg across and maybe wriggle your hips a little bit to the right, coming into a twist. And we'll see if we can get our right shoulder all the way on the ground and maybe extend that right leg straight in a twist. But if you'd rather have your leg bent, feel free to do that. If we can straighten that leg and support it, we'll get a really good stretch through the back and the lateral part of our right hip, right? Maybe hold it straight for a while and maybe then let it bend after a time. Just see if we can get that nice stretch through that lateral right hip to our IT band, side of the leg. Might like to have your leg a little or need to have your leg a little bit lower down. Again, eventually bending it if you'd like and just letting it relax or coming in and out of that stretch, like straightening it and bending it. And just whatever feels right for your body. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to let that right leg bend if it's straight and start to bring ourselves up and out of that by coming onto our back and hugging our knees, bringing the bolsters onto the other side if you have them. And then we'll bring our right foot on the ground Curl up to our left knee and either with a strap or with our hand, grab hold of that foot. I might need a strap on this one. <laughs> and slide our right leg down the mat. So we come into a half happy baby, some pine dragon position. Gently pulling our knee toward our armpit, but making sure that our body is not pulled off center. Turn on our back.
And then we'll start to guide our left leg, ac leg across the body, maybe shift the hips a little bit to the left. And making sure our left shoulder is all the way down. See if we can straighten that, maybe straighten that left leg at least a little bit more and get that stretch through our lateral hip in the, on the left side. But you can always let your knee bend and relax prefer or come in and out of this stretch by letting your leg relax and then come back in. Whatever feels good to your hip on this side, <laughs> whatever works for this hip. And it's kind of an intense stretch if your leg is completely straight and it's at a nine, um, 90 degree angle, right? It's a little bit of an intense stretch. So just explore that. I have my foot braced up against something hard. So another option for this particular kind of thing would be to have something where you can press your foot up against something hard like a wall or a table or something that would help assist that leg to stay in the straight position without having to force it with your hand or yeah, makes it a little bit more supportive. A lot of people think that yin is too easy. And I always say it, yin is simple, but it's not necessarily easy. <laughs> Holding stretches and positions, poses for a length of time can be very challenging. harder than any other yoga, <laughs> actually. Just different. Not for the faint of heart.
Okay, so we can start to bring ourselves back onto our back slowly and bring our knees into our chest and relax our body. And just taking a, a minute in happy baby, we can grab hold of both, both feet. You might like to rock around a little bit with that, or you might like to straighten the legs into more of a straddle, whatever feels good to you here. And then we can just kind of make our way down onto our back and find uh, whatever is comfortable to support you, whether you have a bolster underneath something, knees bent, legs straight, whatever feels good to your body to take a moment to integrate and breathe and just feeling the breath circulating all that chi through our body, <laughs> noticing how we feel and noticing how our breath is. And here's a little quote that I like from somebody called Henry Haskins that suits us for yin practice. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. So in this time of change, these eclipses are bringing and the changes that are happening in the world, may we remember that. <laughs> and enjoy the ride as best as we can and take opportunities as they come. So giving thanks to our body, giving thanks to our breath, giving thanks to Gaia, to Mother. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Deb. Feel free to continue to lay down and relax. Get up slowly 